Hi witches, welcome to the channel. Thank you for watching. I'm Ren, the Cemetery Witch, and today we're going to be talking witchcraft books, most specifically some of my favourite witchcraft books. I've got seven books here that I want to show you guys. Not only have I really enjoyed these books, but I think they hold um, some value and will be helpful to you on your witchcraft path. I'm going to give a reason as to why I've chosen each book and then give a brief rundown. Now, those of you that know me personally or have followed me for a while will probably guess one or two of these. However, I think there will be some surprises in there too. So if you have an interest in witchcraft and in witchcraft books, esoteric books, then this is a video for you, so stay tuned. Welcome back everybody. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I cannot wait to show you the seven books I've chosen and I cannot wait to tell you what I like about them and why I think they will hold value for you. I have curated them into a kind of order. Each book has a very specific reason as to why I've chosen it. And because of that, I have actually put a beginner's book right at the very beginning. So if you have been a practicing witch for many, many years, I mean, I've been doing this 24 years, thereabouts and you see the first book and you you feel like it's you know a beginner's book that's exactly why I've chosen it so I would advise you to watch past the first book so I really hope you enjoy these choices I cannot wait to jump into them and yeah enjoy the video so before I made this video this morning I started thinking about different witches and what their bookcases would look like. And I think if you put 10 witches in front of you and you asked to see their bookshelves and their bookcases, I think you would have, for the main, I think you would have a vast array, uh, a huge variety of books. And this is what I love about witchcraft. This is one of the many things that I love and about witchcraft books and about talking to different witches because we all have different interests, we all have different passions, we all have different backgrounds and we've all come to witchcraft via different channels. And I was thinking about the things that influence us when we choose our books, when we make our book choices. And this is so wide and varied. And I spent quite a bit of time thinking about this this morning and it's actually quite a lovely thing. But you might be inspired to buy a book because you've bought another one online. I know Amazon, for example, makes recommendations. If you buy this book, this is what other people who have bought this book have bought. So you might end up making a purchase through a recommendation you might simply buy a book because you like its cover you might have friends and they've recommended a book to you you might have seen books on YouTube or Instagram so for example you might see a book in this video that you like the look of and you buy but you're also influenced by your age your culture where you're born and those cultural practices around you. I would hazard a guess that as a woman in my 40s, and I would say that therefore I'm quite old school in as much as the kind of witchcraft that I've grown up with and I've been taught by my elders, I think that my choices are going to be quite different to someone else, certainly in terms of showing the books that influenced, influenced us at the beginning. That's not to say that obviously as an older witch, I'm not picking up on um, sort of other, perhaps less class classical authors. If you look at my reviews that I've done through which with books, I've done lots of different books. But in terms of some of my favourite books, some of the books I'm going to show you today, there is no doubt that some of these hark back to the beginning of my roots. So like I said in the intro, I have actually I've, I've created a list of seven books, but I have actually put them in an order and there's a reason that I've done that. And I think that will become apparent to you, but I've basically put a beginner's book at the beginning. And so I really, really hope you enjoy these books. I hope you enjoy the reasons why I've picked them. And I hope you sort of like understand that I've created a framework here. I'll probably do another video of some of my other favourite witchcraft books, because let's face it, there are so many fabulous books out there. And I think that one's going to be less structured. But I've picked the books that I've really enjoyed, I've really engaged with 
but I have tailored this to what I think might be practical and helpful for you guys. And um, whenever I do this, I always kind of do this with beginners in mind. So because if you're an experienced witch and you've been in the craft or practiced the craft for a very long time, you're going to have a very good handle on things anyway. You are going to have read lots of books and you're going to know sort of what's helpful and what isn't. So I'm very much working from a beginner angle, but like I said in the intro, if you're put off by the first book, which I think perhaps more experienced, which will be, and that is not to be rude or offensive or dismissive to the person who wrote the very first book, because I think it's a very valuable book. But anyway, you'll, you'll understand the reasons for my choices as we go through them. So the first book that I've actually chosen is The Real Witch's Handbook by Kate West. Now, the reason I've chosen this book is it's not intimidating at all. And it is a complete beginner's book. It has been designed with the very young or beginners to the craft in mind. And I really think that this is a beautiful book for teenagers, for example, or anyone that is just feels drawn to the craft, but doesn't know which way to go, doesn't know what the craft is all about. And this, I feel, just explains the basics of that. So I didn't actually buy this book first. I, I'm trying to think what my first book was. I can picture the book, um, but I can't remember the name off the top of my head. Oh, it was The Witch's Bible, that's it. Um, and I think that was by Janet and Stuart Farrar. And that is an extremely heavy going book. I'm just gonna put a picture up of that now um, so that you can see which one I'm referring to. And really, whilst that book does give you a lot of information, it's a bit of a scary book and it's very heavy going. And as a beginner, it's not the most ideal book. So I invested in this one not long after. And for me, it just sorted everything out for me. It busts myths about witchcraft, what witchcraft is all about, and it covers really important topics within paganism and witchcraft. So for example, the reverence of nature, freedom of spiritual choice, personal responsibility, and personal development. And I think it's those four things that I really love about this book, that we are introduced to those subjects right at the beginning of this book. I think that's really, really helpful. It explains the importance of the elements and how they are important to magic. It goes through what divination is and a few different types. And basically it just covers the key aspects of witchcraft. So I think this was a really good book for me back in the beginning where I knew I had an interest and I bought a load of books and it just seemed so jumbled and I just didn't really know quite where I was going and it just helped get things on a sort of an even keel for me. It looks at the Wheel of the Year and the different festivals and it has so much practical, useful information in it. For example, it's got information on joining a coven, coming out of the broom closet, attending events. Um, it's got information on groups and organisations using the internet and it is just simple, accessible, positive, um, it's not intimidating, it's not threatening and I think it's just a fundamental book. So it is a beginner's book very much and I I admire Kate West, used to chat, used to correspond with her many years ago, actually, when I used to be a member of the Children of Artemis forums. I expect she's completely forgotten who I am. We used to speak for a couple of years, but um, we're not in touch anymore. And yeah, it's a wonderful book. And she's got other books as well. Like, I think she's got one called The Real Witch's Kitchen. I think she did several books. So if you are a beginner, then this is a lovely, lovely book. And I think it's also the sort of book where if somebody's mum or dad found this in their bedroom and started flicking through, I think they'd be like, hmm, OK, then. Yeah, that, that, that sounds OK. So fantastic book. Fantastic book. So that is my first book choice. I really enjoyed this. And even when I pick it up now, even though I don't really use it now, if, you know, when I was sort of making some notes for doing this video um, and I started reading parts of it, I just, 
Yeah, I felt really good. I felt like I was taken back to those beginning days. And there's it's a really lovely, warm, comforting feel about this book. So as you can see, I've still got all my little scrappy bits of notes and paper in there from when I was younger. But yeah, I recommend this book. It's one of my favourites. Okay, so my second book that I've put on one of my favourite witchcraft books, which I also think is going to be really helpful to you, is An ABC of Witchcraft, Past and Present by Doreen Valiente. Now, obviously, she's known as the mother of modern witchcraft, and I feel like this is a really good book for anyone to have in their witchcraft bookshelf. I love the 70s cover. The first edition of this book was um, published in 1974. This, I believe, is the 1994 version. And the reason I have ch chosen this book and put this in my list is that it covers witchcraft history and basically a lot of things you need to know, but in simple bite-sized chunks. So it's almost a bit like a glossary. Um, so, for example, if I open up to D, it says dancing, comma, it's use and witchcraft. So there are lots of little chunks. It means you can dip in and out of this book. You don't have to read it from A to Z. Um, and I really like that she's done that. I like that she's she's put it from A to Z. Obviously, she's not with us anymore. Um, but I really find this to be such a helpful book. So under A, for example, we've got Avalon comma, the ancient British paradise, and there is helpful information. So it's lots of sort of pagan history, witchcraft history, but you can also learn quite a few things about your craft. So for example, under D, I mentioned dancing. It's got the horned god in here. It's got hypnosis, witchcraft and. So it is, it's a bit like a dictionary. There are um, invocations and little bits of information that you can add to your work, um, but it just explains a lot of things. Uh, for example, reincarnation, there's persecution of witches. And so I just think this is such a helpful book. There are some lovely images in here as well. I just wanted to show you. And oh, there's photographs as well. And I think this is a this is a much more grown up book, obviously, than the, the first book that I showed you. But I think you have to have that really in place. And then this is sort of moving on from there. So really, really wonderful book, lots of helpful information. And I just think that if you are building a classic sort of witchcraft book collection, then that one would sort of need to be in there. So moving on to my third book, it's called Spells and How They Work by Janet and Stuart Farrar. Now, this is an absolutely fantastic book. It looks at the ethics of spell casting. It explains how magic works, what magic is. It uses very clear language. And it's also really interesting as well. It covers all sorts of magic, different types of magic and different types of spell from all over the world. So for example, it covers not magic, it covers medieval charms, all sorts of things. It looks at the attitudes and patterns of belief that are essential for successful magic. And in the appendix, there's some really helpful information. So there are all sorts of um, planetary hours, planetary squares, um, alphabets, invocations, runes or staves, oven staves, all sorts of information. I think, again, this is a much more serious book. This explains how magic works. It talks about the different levels of existence or planes of existence or reality, depending on what you want to name them. And I think that if you are serious about casting spells or performing magic or being a magician and you want to get a good understanding, rather than just, you know, buying a book of spells and doing them, then I think that this is a really important book. For me, this is a core book of witchcraft. It's enjoyable, it's helpful, it's enlightening, and it's really affirming. And it's just, it's really easy to read, and there's enough going on that you don't get bored. There are lots of lovely pictures as well, some photographs in there. 
has to explain the origins of things and how certain things are done. And it's just really authoritative. So they're really careful, the authors, to observe the basic rules of responsibility, as it says on the back, and which is she cast spells that, you know, she'd never intend to do any harm or manipulate. If that is your kind of magic, then whilst this book isn't going to help you with that, the whole point of this book is to understand magic, how it works, the consequences, what the outcomes can be, the ethics, the thought that should go into them um, when things go wrong. It's just a very, very interesting book, very helpful. And the authors call upon their, you know, their vast history. Again, they are some of the people that kind of were fairly, um, in I don't know what word I'm looking for today. I'm having one of those days instructive in the sort of the history of modern witchcraft. So I would very much recommend this book to you all. So as I'm doing this video, I can hear the gardener has started up with the cutting. So hopefully we'll get this video done before he makes his way over here. He's in the other field at the moment. For those of you that haven't picked up on this, I actually live on a cemetery in the old cemetery keeper's lodge and office. So it's a working cemetery. There are people being buried here. There's someone here that does the gardener. There's the general public in and out. So sometimes we do get these disruptions. But I think yeah the noise is enough in the background that it's not going to ruin the video because we're sort of halfway through now so my next book choice is everyday psychic defense by cassandra eason and i have chosen this book because it covers defensive magic so looking after yourself protecting yourself energetically and i think that's really important for anybody's craft so the idea of this book is about protecting yourself from evil and malice there's information on banishing banishing using energy to create shields and it's basically about protecting yourself the home loved ones pets friends and family so there is an abundance of spells in here and i would say that they are on the whole simple easy to do don't take anything too drastic no sort of ingredients that are too difficult to get your hands on and there yeah there's an abundance of spells there are so many in here she looks at poppets um runes crystals did i say it was by cassandra eason i can't remember um she covers blocking negative forces from energy vampires she looks at when things go wrong she looks at ouija boards removing um, a spirit from a person and all I have to say really is that it's just really really well laid out it's super super comprehensive some of the spells in here are so so specific that you read through and I've had a bit of an ongoing issue for what it was seven seven or eight years fingers crossed I, it's now sorted and um, both through magical means and through just, you know, things sorting themselves out. But there was one spell in here and I read it, uh, I read the title of it and I was just like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. I haven't used it, I haven't used it, but it's there if I want it. But it's just so, so specific to my own personal situation. So absolutely fantastic book. It's quite a big book um, and as you can see, there's quite a few pages, so well worth it. However much you pay for this, very much well worth it. I picked this one up. Where did I get this one? I got this one online, I think, didn't I? I think I showed this in one of my earlier videos. Anyway, fantastic book. So much stuff in here. And if you don't have anything on protective or defensive magic, or you're a beginner and you don't quite know where to start, then I think this is a really good book for you. So my fifth book is Magical Herbalism by Scott Cunningham and the reason that I've chosen this book is that I know that many people want to work with plants, be that through essential oils or most specifically normally using herbs in their spells. 
So for anyone wanting to include those in their magical practice, I think this is a great book. Obviously, Scott Herbalism did another book called The Encyclopedia of Mag Magical Herbs. I feel that this book here is actually a pre-runner to that book. That book has hundreds and hundreds of herbs and their magical correspondences, whereas this book actually introduces you more to using herbs and plants and oils and things like that in your craft. So it goes through preparations, tools, uh, rites and rituals. And it, he also talks about the basic pr principles of magic, which he does in a lot of his books. And I really like that. He goes into the ethics and just how you should approach magic. So there are some lists of herbs in here as well to get you going, but I just feel that it's got more magical information in here than, than that larger book. So he covers purifications, protection herbs. So there are some lists in here, which I find quite helpful. I really, I just really appreciate that. I just think it's really practical. Um, there are some lovely illustrations in here, actually, just as I'm flicking through. But for example, there are appropriate herbs and plants to be used for each condenser for each element. So there are just lists. And I really like that, you know, sometimes we we don't want to read, you know, a massive paragraph that basically says that these things are good for this. Sometimes we just need a list. So there is so much information in here, considering this is such a little book. Um, this looks quite old, obviously. I've picked this one up secondhand and I really like the old fashioned cover. Um, it's quite possible that this book has a different name now or a different cover, though I, I doubt the change of name with Scott Cunningham. There is a section in here on gardens and gardening, magical gardening, so growing your own herbs. I think this is just such a useful little book and I just really enjoy it. And the, let me find the illustrations. They're kind of art deco. Aren't they lovely? That really reminds me of a bed cover I used to have back in the 80s when I was little. And so I've got a bit of a thing for these sort of like Art Deco ladies, but there are lots of sort of botanical images in there as well. Um, my one's falling apart. As you can see, the pages are starting to come out a little bit. Um, it does look like it's been around the block, this book. This is one I got secondhand. Um, uh, it looks like it's been to a few places and then I eventually, I think I got this online. But yeah, there's there's information in, in here on candle colours, um, the different items you might need. So for example, salt, spring water. Um, chapter two says magic, a short primer. And um, there's storing herbs. There's, you know, how to use herbs and plants and flowers in different magical applications. So, for example, sachets and pillows. There's a section on frankincense and laurel and how they're often used. So really, really helpful book. Um, couldn't recommend this one enough, really. He goes into what simples are, scrying, just so much information in this book. I could literally just go on about this book forever and as a qualified aromatherapist I really really enjoy this book and I find that a lot of what he says actually connects with what I've learned about plants when using them with their oils so there is a bit of a crossover um yeah just cannot recommend that one enough basically So my sixth book that I've chosen as one of my favourite books is The Crooked Path by Keldon. And the reason that I chose this book is it's a book on an actual tradition. So traditional witchcraft, traditional with a capital T. Obviously, this is can be a bit of a con, sort of a contentious um, controversial subject for some people. The word traditional makes it sound like it's something that's been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years. Some witches will argue that it has. I just kind of feel that like this just represents witchcraft 
kind of how it is. So using traditional with a little t in that sense, it's a very hard thing to explain. I don't quite have the words today. When I think of traditional witchcraft, I think very much of land-based practices. I think of connecting with the earth, getting to know your local area, getting to know who the people were locally, um, your ancestors, your local ancestors, ancestors of your house. That very much fits in with the traditional witchcraft moniker. However, many people would just say, well, that's just witchcraft. So I'll leave that up to you to decide whether traditional witchcraft is a thing Thing. however obviously this author feels that it is and when I read this book I felt like this was me I felt like this just explained me down to a T so this is why sometimes I move between using the phrased traditional witch to describe me and also eclectic witch because to be honest modern witches in the UK are eclectic witches because our practices call upon all sorts of things and the origins of our practices so Wicca for example you know there is some there is all sorts of mysticism that has come from other places in there. So we're, we're all eclectic witches. However, despite what I've said about traditional witchcraft and how people argue over that, when I read this book, it really felt like me. So I wanted to give you guys a book that I enjoy on a set tradition. And I really enjoyed this. There was a foreword, or there is a foreword by Gemma Gary. It's, I feel like if you enjoy me and my page and what I put out there, I feel like you would enjoy this book. There is lots of helpful information. And the best thing about this book is it's not intimidating. I know a lot of people associate traditional witchcraft with bones and skulls and human bones. Personally, I'm, I don't do those things. I'm not into that. It just doesn't resonate with me. But this book, yeah, it's not intimidating at all. It's described as an introduction to traditional witchcraft and it's got rites, recipes, rituals, exercises. For example, there is a hedge crossing ritual in here and it gives you information on other world safety. It has a great glossary in the back and I just found it totally charming and bewitching. It was engaging, it was enjoyable and it was atmospheric and I think you would possibly really, really enjoy this if you enjoy, you know, the offerings that I put out about plants and flowers and nature. So yeah, Learn to Walk the Path of Traditional Witchcraft, fantastic book by Keldon. Now, obviously it wouldn't be a video on witchcraft books or my favorite witchcraft books without my favorite book of all time. So I saved this one till last because you guys have heard me talk about this endlessly. The reason I've chosen this book is it concentrates on earth energy. So I love watching the change of the season. That's how I really celebrate my path. It's how I really get into my path. It doesn't use the word witch or witchcraft, which I think is really, really clever. And yet it epitomizes what witchcraft is and the spirit of witchcraft. For me personally, I believe that this is just the most beautiful, beautiful book. I love it so much. It's engaging, it's uplifting. And when you read it, you really feel like yeah, I really feel like I'm thick within my path and my spirituality and it just gives me such a lovely comforting feeling and you really feel like you're doing it even just when you're reading the book. There are exercises in here, there's information, meditations, activities, celebrations, just so much to be gained from getting this book. Um, if you're not sure how to celebrate the Wheel of the Year, but you want to, then this is the book for you. And it looks at understanding the elements and manifestation. It looks at the sun and the moon and the earth. I'm sorry, my stomach is rumbling. I've not had any breakfast. And there are just so many things, it's so many activities in here that you could easily do. So this book for me, really helps people connect with their path and get involved and get engaged and not feel like they have to question themselves. So if you ever ask the question, am I 
am I witchy enough? Or you say, I don't feel witchy enough. I challenge you to buy this book. It's blue now. Um, the cover now is a bit more like this picture and it's called Sacred Earth Celebrations. This is a really old copy. So this has got, even though it says revised and updated, it's since been changed since then, I believe. But yeah, anything by Glennie Kindred. So that is the end of my suggestions. I'm sorry we were plagued with gardeners and rumbling tummies, but that's how it goes. That's real life. Um, I'd love to know what your favourite books are. I know online, all of us, we talk about books all the time. I never, ever, ever get bored of you telling me what your favourite witchcraft book is, even if you tell me 10 times. I would love to hear what books you love. You can give me a list of 50 if you like. The really good thing about sharing our experiences and things we like and things we've learned is that other people read those things and can take information from that. And it's very possible, given what I've said at the beginning about how every witch is different and will have a different selection of books, it's very possible that the books that you give me or you put in the comments, I've probably not heard of half of them. There are so many witchcraft books out there at the moment, which is is a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because there is just so much information now. It's so different to when I was younger. Um, certainly they were out there, but it was a lot harder for a young person to get their hands on. We didn't have Apple Pay. We didn't have online banking. It, there was the library or there was you know, going to shops somewhere and then them not necessarily stocking witchcraft books because that was seen as a bit weird. It's really normal now. You go into lots of bookshops and there are lots of self-help books, witchcraft books. But yeah, so there, there's probably loads of books out there from back then and from now that I've not heard of. And I hope that you've seen some books today that you've not heard of and or at least that you have perhaps a framework you know, if you want to get started on this path or you've been on it a while and you need a little bit of direction. So these are all books that I have personally enjoyed, engaged with, and I think that will be really, really helpful to you. So this has been fabulous. I've enjoyed this, doing this video so much, guys. So thank you for being here. If you've watched this all the, all the way to the end, thank you and well done. And if you haven't subscribed already and would like to, then you know what to do. If you hit the bell notification icon, you'll never miss another video. They are still sort of a bit fluid at the moment. I do always do the Witching Week on a Friday. I am currently still working on a few things in the background that I want to get finished. And I'm finding it hard to find decent windows at the moment because of my living arrangements, because we have the gardener who gets close to the house sometimes. And it's summer, so the grass is growing like mad and it's cutting season. So my husband's also had a little bit of time off. So it's been a bit difficult up to now, but please bear with me. And I think that YouTube isn't a race either. This is just an opportunity for me to share my stuff with you when I get a moment. So um, hang in there. I'm always going to be here. I really, really enjoy doing these videos. I have to say that in some ways I'm enjoying this more than Instagram. This is very free flowing. I can just be myself and it has just been, it's just been brilliant doing these. So thank you so much. I owe this all to you guys. And yeah, I'm gonna be back soon with another video. I am going to be recording today what it's like to live on a cemetery. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you enjoy that. Okay, take care for now. Lots of love to you all, bye.